By the way, let me just say something here. All right. I think Kyle Wait Shanahan on. is a great coach. I think he's an unbelievable schemer. But putting your star left tackle in motion on a quarterback sneak when you need one inch is the action of somebody who stuck his head between his legs and sniffed his own farts one too many times. What's up, everybody? Connor Outtree, Joe Dolan here, and we're talking some divisional football. Before we get into it, Joe, wild card wrap up. Pretty wild, wild, super wild card weekend, mind you. And I got a super cool hat on. How are you, Joe? I'm I'm, I'm uh, doing all right, Connor. You're uh, you're having a good time wherever you are. I'm I'm still here in gloomy Greenville, South Carolina, where we're still recovering from a snowfall event of the decade. Uh, which is horrible for me because if I never saw another snowflake, it would be too soon. Um, I'm from the north, so I'm not a snow fan. You are. I don't believe it's snowing where you are. No, I'm. I'm in Mexico, uh, yeah. Cancun. <laughs> I'm having the time. Something to note, though. My buddy plays in the ECHL and was just in Greenville uh, talking about that snow. Oh, the, 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 the swamp hotel. rabbits. The swamp the rabbits, swamp. baby. Yeah. What a name! Did you guys like vote as a community to come up with the? Well, rabbits it's it, it's uh it's got some it's got some well not to go into too much greenville history but it's got some uh some historical uh significance we have a trail here that goes all the way through the city for over 20 miles known as the site i think it goes over 30 miles are you drinking tequila no it's water it's just oh, okay water. um uh i was like hey man you live your best life but it's like 9 a.m there i think <laughs> no no it's 11 05 it's happy hour oh okay so wait a minute i, I have no idea where cancun is it's all, uh, it, yeah, I'm Eastern time right now. What? All right, I made fun of you for today. not knowing United States geography earlier, but uh, yeah, okay. I didn't know Cancun was on the East Coast. It is. I, Where's, it I've is. never been to Mexico. It's, right, it's like, literally, I was in Florida, and I just took a little skip and a hop over the Gulf of Mexico, and I'm here. Oh, well, no kidding. All right. Well, there, there's the lesson. So, uh, well, I mean, if you were drinking tequila, it's a little bit more acceptable at 11 a.m. Um, uh, I'm not really sure there's a proper time for tequila ever. It's directly uh, south of Alabama, so that does make sense. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I always thought it was on the West Coast. Well, that shows you, you how what I know. Is Cozumel on the West Coast? Uh, that's also near Cancun. You're probably thinking of Guadalajara or Mexico City. Well, I, yeah, I, I must be. I don't know. I've never been. I've never <laughs> been to. Uh, I've never been to Mexico. So anyway, I'm going to the Dominican Republic in June. That's east of the United States. That I do know. Oh, it's more like southeast. Um, it's. Uh, but anyway, that is the <laughs> dumbest shit. island. I can you tell know, you that. Like, here's the thing. My my sister always tells me uh, it's on the island of Hispaniola, well, along with Haiti. Um, my sister always tells me I should go on Jeopardy. This three minutes at the beginning of the show is proof positive that I should not. Um, I, I do, there, are a, there are a lot of things I, I can answer, but I'm terrible. At, I, I guarantee you, if I were to go on Jeopardy, I would get opera, art, and geography. Dolan would get wiped out. That would the Dolan would get absolutely wiped out. Um, the geography is at least something I think you can study. Like you can, you know, like. But opera and art, forget about it. And I definitely get or classical music. I'd be I, I like listening to classical music. You know, it's it's. But I can't I, I don't I can't recognize it. You know, and all that stuff. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, it was uh, a wild card weekend that you know, uh, Connor. Six teams won. All six covered. Five favorites won. And the only underdog that we saw uh, that that won was the 49ers, and we said on this very program last week that they were the livest of the underdogs. So it actually was a pretty chalky wildcard weekend, very chalky, in fact. Yeah, well, speaking of the music and the opera, we got a pretty solid game in Music City. The Titans are back in action. Uh, Hosting uh, Joe Burrow, you like that. that? That was a fair way to transition into that. Oh, it's not a golf show. Damn it, that would have been cool. Joe Burrow coming off a 244 performance, two tutties, a 110 passer rating. Something to note. When he has 100-plus pass rating since he's 9-2, and two. Jamar Chase had nine grabs for 116 yards. When he has 100-plus yards since he's 5-1. and one. And Tennessee gave up the second-most receptions and yards to wide receivers this season. Um, wow. So cue the Billy Idol again, my guy, more, 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 on the Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow line on Monkey Knife Fight. And Just kick well, things off. Let me, uh, let me give you a huge update here. Um, uh looking at the Titans injury report, Janoris Jenkins, Jack Rabbit Jenkins, um, their starting corner, one of their starting corners, 
did not practice on Wednesday. He picked up an ankle injury. He must have picked it up in practice or at late in practice on Tuesday. He didn't practice on Wednesday. I don't know if this is precautionary, but if he doesn't go, this is obviously huge news for Joe Burrow. It's big news for Jamar Chase. And it's also big news for T. Higgins, who I got to admit, I was a little disappointed in his performance. I thought he was going to have a much better one against the Raiders, but I would I would be interested to see his number because I'd go more there as well. If Jackrabbit Jenkins, whatever you want to call him, Janoris Jenkins, the Titans official website lists him as Jackrabbit Jenkins. Um, if he doesn't go, big news for the Bengals passing game. Yeah, and to be honest with you, what's going to stop Joe Burrow right now? I mean, look at his picture on Monkey Night Fight. The guy looks like a pure Don. The glasses, he's got the swagger going. He he just win. He looks like he's ready to win. But something to note on the other side of the ball, you got the return of the king, possibly. Foreman, aver- Foreman is understudy, averaging 4.3 yards per carry. And the Bengals got shredded last week by Josh Jacobs for 6.4 yards per carry. So there's going to be – which team is going to implement their game plan is realistically what I'm going to be looking at. I think that the Titans are going to be able to find some rushing success – especially because the Bengals lost three defensive linemen last week. Yep. Uh, uh, Josh Tupu, uh, uh, Mike Daniels, Larry Ugonjobi, uh, uh, Trey Hendrickson went down with the concussion. Mm-hmm. Now, here is the here is the good news for Trey Hendrickson. He got in a full practice on Wednesday. It looks like he's going to play. Um, Tupu, um, Mike Daniels, Ogunjobi. Uh, Tupu has got the best chance. Daniels and Ogunjobi are, gonna, are not going to play in this game, I don't think. Uh, Ogunjobi's on IR. So this is good news for the Titans run game. We'll see about Derrick Henry, but I think it's trending in the direction for Derrick Henry to play in this one. And here's the big question. Deontay Foreman's done a nice job filling in for him. Pretty nice job. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, And the question now becomes, do you bring in Derrick Henry and make him a part-time player? Because you remember earlier in Derrick Henry's career when he was a part-time player, he was not effective. This is a guy who needs carries. So I don't know if you bring in Derrick Henry, if you're going to activate him, I don't think it's to give him eight to 10 carries. I think it's to give him 15 to 20. Um, So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Titans react then. Yeah, he's a full-blown workhorse. And another guy in that backfield that we obviously have to talk about is quarterback Ryan Tannehill. And he's been red hot. Accumulated 100-plus passer rating in three consecutive contests, seven tutties, no picks, not to mention that he rushed for seven touchdowns this season. Man, the Bengals are going to have their hands full this weekend in Music City. A.J. Brown is back. Julio Jones is back. The Titans are looking to tighten up, if you will. Yeah, um, uh, the Bengals, via Football Outsiders DVOA, had the ninth worst pass defense in the NFL this year. Though, I mean, I think they did a good job with the corners that they had. I thought it was a really bad cornerback situation. They've improved that. Now, Mike Hilton, the slot corner, He got dinged up in that game. He's going to play. He has an ankle injury, but he got dinged up a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see um, exactly how the Bengals line up here, but it is a good matchup for Ryan Tannehill by the numbers. Um, Obviously, Trey Hendrickson playing in this game, which we do expect, increases the Bengals' uh, pass rush, which they're going to need to get to Tannehill. Yeah, well, looking at it from a monkey knife fight uh, perspective here, Ryan Tannehill coming in at 229 and a half right now on monkey knife fight. So I have to hit the more on that. A.J. Brown, as I said, he's healthy. He's going to be firing. And you have Julio Jones back there. So, man, this is going to be a heck of a football game. But I think I have to give the edge to the Titans. And on all these props, I'm really seeing more, 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 except for Joe Mixon, where I'm going to comfortably take the less on him at 67 and a half rush yards. Um it's just, it doesn't look good. The Titans have allowed under four yards per carry in 2021, ranking fourth best in the NFL. And Mixon was not effective against the Raiders. No, um, he's, I, I think he's a guy who's more effective if you get him in space in the passing game. I agree with you. I'm going to take the less on Joe Mixon. I, I just, I, I can't in good faith take a less on Jamar Chase right now. I can't do it. Yeah, I mean, Jamar Chase's line of six and a half receptions almost seems offensively low. After that performance last week, 13 targets, nine grabs. And, his and they'll, get, they'll and get it to him near the line of scrimmage, too. And that's one thing you like to see if you're taking the more on a receptions prop. Yeah, no. So I think we're I think we're in a comfortable situation here, Joe, where we're, we're firing more on the wide receivers and the quarterbacks in this matchup. More on the Titans' backfield, depending on who will be back there, either Derrick Henry or the understudy foreman. And then Joe Mixon is the comfortable less. But... Let's pack that one up and move up to Green Bay now where the Packers 
are getting back in action against the 49ers. And I think the Packers are just going to steamroll them. Uh, I, they're, I mean, they're just so good. They, yeah, they are, they are good. Um, and I, I think they're, they're a team on a mission. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think Aaron Rodgers looks at it that way. I think he's going to come at, um, he's going to come out and just play his game, which is good news. Um, but the Packers are also getting healthier. Um, now there's one, there's one problem for the Packers. Marquez Valdez Scantling got downgraded on Wednesday. Uh, he had limited practice on Tuesday, got downgraded to no practice on Wednesday. The midweek downgrade is never good. I don't know if they're, um, playing him differently. Um, because of the playoffs, I don't know, but we'll see today. But the, the midweek downgrade is not good. But Jair Alexander, chance to play this week, their top corner. David Bakhtiari, their left tackle, did play in week 18. Looks like he's going to go. Obviously, you know, Nick Bosa went down with the concussion in the wild card round against the Cowboys. Devondre Campbell with the elbow. Looks like he's going to play. Looks like Zadarius Smith has a chance to play, get activated off of IR for the Packers, one of their best pass rushers. So the Packers are getting held. Don't tell me. I mean, now, I I'm not breaking any news here, okay? Like, the buy is obviously important. But look at look at the teams coming off of buys here. The Titans maybe getting Derrick Henry back. And, you know, the Packers maybe getting Alexander and Zadarius Smith. Meanwhile, you look at guys like Cincinnati. You look at teams like San Francisco. That lost players in the wild card round shows you how important these buys are. Green Bay getting very healthy at the right time to make a push for the Super Bowl. Yeah, and Jimmy Garoppolo did not show out last week. I'm going to – Oh, no. He, he did not have a good game, and I, I think that's really led into to this receiving line that we're about to talk about here. Jimmy G at 244 and a half passing yards. The Packers gave up under seven yards per pass attempt this year. Like, wow. I'm going to take the less on Jimmy Garoppolo in that cold. Man, good luck going up the Lambeau. Good luck, I George Kettle, four and a half receptions. He had one reception last week. Four straight games under yeah, yeah. 30 yards. Give me the last. His best there. play, by the way, was the one he didn't catch. Yeah, that was good. Joe Dolan with the hot call. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, because he because of that fumble. By the way, let me just say something here. All right, I think Kyle right Shanahan is a great coach. I think he's an unbelievable schemer. But putting your star left tackle in motion on a quarterback sneak when you need one inch is the action of somebody who stuck his head between his legs and sniffed his own farts one too many times. I mean, what are you doing? You need one inch. The only thing that's going to hurt you in that situation is a penalty. What happened? A penalty. The Cowboys don't even have the chance to embarrass themselves if that doesn't happen. Yeah, that's that's just not. So maybe good. America should be thanking Kyle Shanahan for that because we all get to laugh at the Cowboys for an, another off season. But oh, yeah, man. just just what a like. Come on, Kyle. And I mean, he's been doing that crap all year. You know, look, Debo is a weapon out of the backfield, but we had that stretch where he wasn't even getting targeted in the passing game. Like yep. he's figured that out. But like, I mean, come on, man. Like, what what is going on here? Um, well, but yeah, I'm taking the less on Jimmy Garoppolo. He just does not look healthy. Yeah, no, and as I said, the less on George Kittle because they just can't get the ball to him. And then Debo Samuel's prop at 62 and a half receiving yards. I just – I have to take the less on that based off how they're using him. Ten rushes last week for 72 yards. I mean, he seems to be that running back role that you alluded to, and they're trying to get him involved in the past game. But, man, Jimmy G was missing receivers three yards over their head, wide open guys. He missed Brendan Ayuk for what could have been an easy first down. I'm just – I'm not feeling confident in this 49ers team. I think they were one of the hottest teams coming into the playoffs, but I think they could have really laid it into Dallas and made that they, – they should have walked right through Dallas based on yeah. that performance from the Cowboys. Oh, yeah, Dallas was terrible. And the 49ers, I mean, they they very, very nearly blew that game. Um, I know. I, I think – like, I, I this stuff happens in the playoffs where you're like, ah, there's no way this team's going to come in here. But I really do think the Packers are going to win this game. And I think they're yeah. going to win it. I don't know about easily. The 49ers have too much talent, but especially if Bosa can't play, I think the Packers are going to have their way with that secondary. Yeah. I think they're going to have the way with that secondary, especially if Bart Batiari's back in the lineup, you know, he's their best offensive lineman. He'll be able to hold down the fort for Rogers and something to note that the Packers are seven and zero when Devonte Adams has a hundred plus yards 
and they're going to be looking for Adams. As you said, Scantling, uh, he's banged up, Valdez Scantling. So I think Adams prop at uh, 96.5 receiving yards. I'm going to have to take the more on that. Aaron Rodgers, 265.5. Like the, the Give me San the more. Francisco- yeah, I'm going to take the more because San Francisco, no matter what the weather is, they're just gettable in the pass game. Yeah. So go out and get them. Yeah, go give me more on, on both Rodgers and Adams in this game. You know, obviously Valdez, Scantling. Um, if you're playing DFS, you know, maybe Alan Lazard, who's come on lately, becomes an option for you. Randall Cobb, by the way, supposed to play in this game for the Packers as well. Yeah, a little, a little 2010 flashback. A little throw it back in the pan. If we want to talk about flashback performances – Let's transition into that Rams and Buccaneers game. Tom Brady, Eli Mitchell's line. Uh, well, here's the thing. He ran for 4.7 yards in 2021. His uh, his line is not actually on the rundown. What's his line right now, Jason? Yeah, so you don't have to actually pick it if you don't have the line. It's 75 and a half rushing yards, but just to complete our little five by five here. Uh, I'll the take the more on that. They give him the ball 20 times a game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's they're going to be their only key to success. Uh, as we just said, we're we're not neither of us are feeling confident with Jimmy G uh, slinging the rock right now. So you got to get Eli Mitchell going, and he had a pretty solid showing last week. So I mean, not the best yards per carry, but he still got the the ball a healthy enough dose to break over ninety yards. So I'll think I think I'll take the more on that, and then getting into that Rams Buccaneers game. Oh me, oh my. Tom Brady in week three threw for over 400 yards against the Rams. Granted, he was playing catch-up. Um, the Rams won that game. Give me the more on Tom Brady, please, with a cherry on top. 295.5. It's playoff Brady. If you think I'm betting against playoff – like, I wouldn't be on air right now if I bet against yeah. playoff Brady. I wouldn't have a job. I'd be homeless. Maybe uh, m- maybe, maybe I'll be doing this from the curb next week because I'm taking the less. Ooh. Um, they're really banged up. And I know, you know, Brady against Philadelphia. Look, let, 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 let's be honest. Philadelphia was a team that overachieved this year. Probably like n- never, never is a team like, oh, we're just happy to be here, especially a team that won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago. But that Eagle team was a team that, you know, I don't think was, was expected to make the playoffs this year. And the Buccaneers handled them as such. This Rams team is, <laughs> you might've seen the memes. They're all in. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. this, this yeah. is a different beast. Jalen Ramsey and Mike Evans is the matchup. I am going to take the less on Brady because divisional Lenny is expected to be back this week. Playoff Lenny. Yeah. I remember how high we are on playoff Lenny last week, just to have him not play. divisional yeah. playoff Sunday Lenny. Yes. Lenny divisional Lenny will be playing in this game. It looks like Greg Allman of the athletic just reported Leonard Fournette continues to practice as he works back from his hamstring. Looks promising for him being activated off injured reserve ahead of Sunday's game. So it looks like, yeah. Yeah. Again, though, I just, I can't bet against Tom Brady. I mean, he shredded this defense for 400 yards earlier in the season. As I said, 295.5 seems gettable. Uh, The Mike Evans prop is actually the one where I was going to fade. I was going to take the last at 72.5 because I feel like Rams is going to be all over him. Like, like white on rice. Joe, what are you feeling for Mike Evans there at 72 and a half yards? I'm going to take the less. Yeah, I think I, I mean, think with Ramsey, a- you know, and Ramsey, they play him in a variety of roles, but it just kind of feels like the, the best way to do it here. I mean, look, look at the, the, the number two receiver for the Buccaneers is Brashad Perriman, and he's questionable. He's got like abdominal injuries. So I don't know. It feels like the Rams are going to be like, all right, Jalen, go do your thing. And we're going to we're going to we're going to focus everything else on getting to Brady and stopping him and stopping the run game. Yeah, well, I mean, Rob Gronkowski, we both projected a big game from him last week, and I'm projecting another big game, 5.5 receptions with Ramsey basically face-guarding Mike Evans for the better part of this game is what what I think would be the the play if you're the Rams because Evans is their most physical receiver. He can go up and get that rock, and Gronk at 5.5 receptions, I have to take the more on that just based off of my confidence in Tom Brady. Yeah, um, I'll take the more. I'll take the more on Gronk as well, um, because I, I'm going to take the less on on uh, Evans. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're at least we're together with the with the wide receiver tight end thing again. We're we're clashing heads with the, with the Tom Brady thing. But on the other side of the rock, you got Matt Stafford coming in 279 and a half yards in his top target. Also, Cooper Cup, 99.5 receiving yards. That's his line, and 8.5 receptions. 
man, Cooper Cup is just so good at getting open, catching the ball at the line of scrimmage for wide receiver screens, getting open downfield. He runs his route so cleanly. I have to take the more on Matthew Stafford because if the Rams are going to be successful, he has to pass for 280 yards, in my opinion. And then Cooper Cup's his top target. So give me the more on his receiving line and his reception line. Uh, a, a Buccaneer slot corner, Sean Murphy Bunting, did not practice on Wednesday with a hamstring injury. Um, now that keep that keep that in mind. Andrew Whitworth, the offensive lineman, the left tackle for the Rams, did not practice with a knee injury. He rested in the second half last week against Arizona. Um, there were reports that he could have gone in, but the game was a blowout, so they weren't going to rest it. But just keep that in mind, some big-time problems here. And we should have mentioned, by the way, on the Buccaneers' offensive side of the ball, when it comes to Gronk, Taylor Rapp, the starting safety for the Rams. Concussion did not practice on Wednesday as well. So obviously they have problems at the safety position. And we also have problems for the Buccaneers on the offensive line with Ryan Jensen and Tristan Wirfs, one of the other reasons I'm taking less on Brady. So just a little injury run down there. But because of Murphy bunting, because, as you said, the need for the Rams and Matthew Stafford to have to throw the ball to be successful, I am taking the more on both of these. Even though Cup, coming off of a little bit of a quiet game, 5 for 61 and a touchdown, but against the, against the Cardinals, Matthew Stafford threw only 17 passes going to take a wild guess that it's going to be more than that this weekend against yeah I think uh, I'm, I'll be I'll be right there with you on that one Joe and something just a, a little side note monkey knife fight aside I'm kind of shocked that the Bucks are two point favorites heading into this one. Oh, the puppies in the background hey puppy oh yeah that's crimp it crimp it well Scott you can't see scotch scotchy's out of camera here hold on let me uh there there's oh. scotch right there there's butterscotch um but uh, yeah butterscotch and crimp it two dogs uh they're with Double daddy up. today they're with daddy today. They like uh, they were just sitting outside my office because they know this couch is in here and they just wanted to come on up and uh, and, and look at and look at my uh, football watching den. Well, I mean, that's well, I think the dogs could be barking in Tampa Bay. I mean, two point underdogs. The Rams are two point underdogs. I, just, uh, I, I already hit them at plus three. Yeah, well, there you I, go. I, that was going down. That was going down. I yeah, well, it it's probably 1.5 as we're speaking and down to one by the time we're off the show. We got another game, though. Man, the Sunday slate just gets me fired up. Bills versus Chiefs. Josh Allen, what a performance. He was incredible. Man, at one point, he had like five touchdown passes and four incompletions at one point. That's and right. Like, What? He had more touchdown passes than incompletions with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Are you kidding me? He Yeah, he had more touchdown passes than incompletions in the entire game. Yeah, well. Because yeah, he only point. threw because he only threw four incompletions. Um, the Bills scored seven touchdowns. They faced a third down six times. That's a good way to win a football game. Um, I don't know if they're going to have that much success. This is not a team I want to stand in front of right now. Uh, even though the Chiefs, by the way, I am incredible at reverse jinxes. I'm just incredible at them this year. It's been great. I, I Like, after the Chiefs, like, run that stupid why, – why are you running wildcat plays in your own end of the field when Patrick Mahomes is your quarterback? You kidding me? Yeah, man. I, uh, they were Well, they were just toying with their food last week. Travis, what was the – I have to know what the prop would have been on Monkey Knife Fight for Travis Kelsey over under on the touchdown passes. Are you kidding me? Travis Kelsey threw a touchdown pass. Yep. Man, this is just two teams that are having fun and clicking well, and they – um, man, did they take care of business last week. Josh Allen's line, 279.5. Give me the more, more, more. Cue the Billy Idol. Stefan Diggs, 77.5. Give me the more. Yeah, I'll take the more on these as well. Um, they, uh, the, the, again, last week, t five touchdown passes for Josh Allen, but he threw just 25 passes. So, Stefan Diggs, how about this? Josh Allen goes for 308 and five touchdowns. Stefan Diggs catches three passes. You want to talk about how uh, deep the Bills are? They've, they've kind of promoted Isaiah McKenzie over Cole Beasley. Gives them a little bit more dynamic uh, ability there. They're just loaded across the board are the Buffalo Bills. Give me the more as well. Yeah, and Gabriel Davis has come out of nowhere and just emerged himself as a really solid number two option for Josh Allen, especially on that post route. I mean, man, well, going back and watching the NFL tape just on Instagram of the angle from where Josh Allen threw that post route, post route touchdown was just – he literally had centimeters on either side of the ball to be intercepted on the money touchdown. He's just, yeah, Buffalo Bills side. Give me the more. Patrick Mahomes, on the other hand, 285.5 pass yards is his line. 
he's going to have to do it. I think this is he's going to have to be able to get to or close to 300 yards for KC to be effective here in this game. So I'm going to have to take the more on that. Although Buffalo's defense, man, you got to be you got to be feeling pretty good right now if you're part of the Bills Mafia defense. But still, with that said, it's Patrick Mahomes throwing underhand touchdown passes, 285 and a half at home at Arrowhead. Uh, it just it seems that, that one seems like it's hittable for Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, and it's it, it's it's a line of 55 and a half. Just give me the more. I I, I like I, I've galaxy brained myself a couple of times this year into taking into taking lesses on the Chiefs and it's backfired every time. So, yeah, uh, uh, Travis Kelsey, 71.5, needs 72 yards. Obviously, he was involved in the big way last week. I mean, I got to take the more on him. He's just such a consistent target. Yeah, uh, I'll take I'll take more on Kelsey. Um, Tyree kills a little bit tougher, though. Mm-hmm. 6.5 receptions <sighs> is his line. That's He's been like, dinged up of late. He had five catches. Uh, I think I'm going to I'm going to fade the less uh, yeah. like last week. Just Here we go again. Yeah, exactly. There it is, folks. Watch out on that one. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six of his last seven games, he's gone under six and a half catches. So, I mean, the the odds are ever in your favor if we're talking hunger games, but I could be going hungry betting against Tyreek Hill here. Again, though, I have to follow the statistics and what I'm seeing from this Chiefs team. So give me the less on Tyreek Hill with six and a half receptions because when he is in the game, it seems to be – an effective red zone passer, a deep pass, just a look or two. And Mahomes, I mean, he has weapons now. He's he's finding Hardman down the field. He's finding everybody. And Byron Travis Pringle Kelsey. has been the guy who's really stepped up for them. Yeah, I, I love that you, you noted him. And then, again, Travis Kelsey just carrying tacklers with him for an extra 10 yards for those yak yards. So I think I'm going to have to take the less there and then the more and – Joe Dolan, I mean, this football game, who do you favor? Buffalo. I think they're the better team. Yeah, I'm riding with the Bills Mafia. You know, being from Toronto, I, I'm like, I get bullied in the Bills Mafia. I'm like, guys, I'm a Bears fan. Like, I did this doesn't matter to me whatsoever. But I think I got to kind of, I got to hop on the bandwagon a bit, I think, here. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to take the Bills. I think I, I, Thought they were the better team all year than the Chiefs. I think they're the better team now. Um, I'm taking the Bills. Yep. Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. It wouldn't, hey, it wouldn't be a Joe Dolan, Connor Roundtree show without a little duet. You know, we, we've kind of yeah. really cemented ourselves in there. Hey, I could probably pull out the mariachi. I can't play an instrument for the life of me, but I got the hat. Yeah, you. I mean, you're looking good. You're having fun. You better hit the tequila. Um, I mean, I got a I got a wedding to go to, so after the wedding, you know. Uh, uh, that's my that's my Jim Moore impression from the playoffs. From the playoffs, like that. The my favorite part of that entire rant is his scoff before he says playoffs. Opt. Like he couldn't make that sound again if he tried. Like, oh uh, man, you kidding me? Oh, well, it's it's that's right up there with the I, Allen Iverson, right? They had the dress rehearsal last night. It's like practice. You talking about AI practice? man, a legend practice not the game not the game that i love not the wedding that i'm here for but practice nah man Give when's the wedding uh i think it's in a couple it's in a little bit here i should probably get my suit on i should probably get out of here but uh joe final thoughts for this divisional weekend because as i said the sunday slate man am i fired yeah. up for those games on sunday I, I will tell you this um the favorites overwhelmingly performing the way they did in wild card round sets up an amazing divisional round. This is a really good slate of games. Yeah, no, it's going to be full of excitement, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Joe Dolan, Fantasy Points' very own, the man, the myth, the legend. He's with his puppies today in the office. So maybe, I mean, we were just talking about the favorites, but maybe the dogs will get a little barking and a little barking action. The Rams, they're underdogs. Why? Folks, I'm Connor Outry. That's Joe Dolan. Thanks so much for tuning in to Monkey Night Fights preview show of the divisional round. And remember to hit it hard.